Alrighty, alrighty. All right, so if you see some others coming in, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. And for our guest, Yansan, good late night. <laughs> Fantastic, everybody. Welcome, everyone. Just letting everybody in. Uh, this meeting is actually being recorded uh, today. So great to see so many names, familiar names. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, it's been a wonderful week. I'm so glad to have everybody here for our closing ceremonies. Um, we're about to head in. Uh, so if I could ask you to put yourself on mute if you are not on mute already. Uh, we're going to be having a wonderful casual fireside chat conversation today. I am very lucky to be joined by two amazing colleagues. So if you're not on mute, if you could throw yourself on mute, that would be great. Um, but I'm here today to, I'm joined with two amazing colleagues of mine. One dialing all the way in from Dubai. Oh my goodness, this is Young Sun. And the other one dialing in formally from Dubai, but actually now in Toronto, Joanne. So really excited to have our guests on the line today to close off Changemaker and Residency Week 4.0. So I hope that everybody has had an opportunity to come to some of our sessions this week. We've been discussing the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We've been discussing change making. We've been looking at how we want to make change in the world, we flourishing, all kinds of amazing things. So um, we're going to get started here today. I'm going to share my screen in a minute. We're going to do things a little differently. So I'm going to start by setting the context for this fireside chat today. Um, and I would love everybody, if you've been to um, a session already in Changemaker and Residency Week, I would love to see uh, you give us a hands up, a thumbs up, and your little reactions down along the bottom on Zoom. Uh, this is a really great way for you can, to participate in this fireside chat today. We're going to be using the chat. Um, we really want you to be engaged because even though we're going to be having a discussion today about change making journeys, we really do want some participation uh, from the audience. So yeah, so if you've been to a session previously in Changemaker and Residency Week, give us a thumbs up and those little reaction buttons down there. Uh, I've been to a few myself. I don't know about you, Joanne. Have you been to a few? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> As well. Maybe really energizing and great. <laughs> Fantastic. And Joanne has been one of our facilitators as well. So let's get started on this wonderful journey this afternoon. We're going to be because this is what this is about. This is going to be a journey this afternoon. So I'm going to share my screen, the ubiquitous uh, heads up that I'm going to be sharing. And then I will not be able to see the chat. So Joanne and Youngson, if you can uh, take a look, uh, but here's my screen. If uh, can, can I get a thumbs up uh, if we can see? Fantastic. I'm going to play from the start. So here we are. Here we are, Changemaker in Residency Week 4.0. And so while I'm talking today, it would be wonderful if you could introduce yourself in the chat, uh, maybe just uh, say your name um, and uh, maybe where you're dialing in from today. Um, you know, long time listener, first time caller, come on in, tell us where you're, you're coming in from. And if you're at Georgian, please tell us the program that you're at. So first of all, Changemaker Residency Week 4.0, this is the fourth time we have done this. We have done this every week nine since the beginning of the pandemic. So this is a full cycle around the sun for us uh, with this. And this is our closing session. And I can't be remiss, but not to thank um, a lot of people today who have brought this to you. Uh, namely, we've had some fiscal sponsors uh, with Ashoka Canada and GCSA Barry. Uh, we have had many participating departments uh, with us today. Uh, we have had co-op, international, GCSA. We've had the indigenous services. Um, I don't know if I'm missing any, we've had HBAC present today. So we've had so many uh, individuals join us today. Um, if you're just joining us, if you could put yourself on mute, that would be amazing, uh, just as we move forward here into the first uh, part of the introduction. So if you are joining us, uh, just make sure you're on mute today. Lots of opportunities. Okay, cool. All right, fantastic. Thanks, everyone. All right, let's get this show on the road and let's talk about what our closing ceremony is about today. So first of all, if you have been paying attention this week, uh, one of the great things that we've talked about is Georgian College is the first and currently only Ashoka Changemaker campus in uh, Canada. And we're really proud to this fact, and this is what this week is all about. It's about celebrating 
uh, this idea that Georgian uh, joins many, many institutions around the world that are globally uh, looking at uh, building changemaker social innovation competencies, not only in their students, but also in their staff, faculty, and the, and the partners surrounding these institutions. Uh, this is a rigorous process that we had to go through. It took us almost two years to get it. We've had it since 2015, and we're really happy to say that um, <clears throat> It has really, uh, has really driven us and it has really has defined a lot of our characters moving forward. And uh, part of those characters moving forward is uh, the bringing on of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And if you joined us in our opening session, you would have heard our Director of uh, Social Innovation and speak to, uh, speak to the idea that um, Jordan is going to be joining the SDG Accord. And what this means is that Jordan is signing on uh, to uh, commit themselves to the global agenda of 2030. And this a global agenda is this agreement that um, we need to sort of work together planetary on these four uh, for peace, prosperity and beyond. There are 17 goals at the heart of this agenda and that if we can meet the targets underneath these goals locally um, and globally, then we'll be in better position to sort of uh, bring health, well-being, equity uh, for all um, so that we can live together on this planet, this great blue marble in space uh, for many generations beyond. So that's what this week has been about. Hopefully you've been in sessions and you've learned a little bit about these goals. Um, and <clears throat> that brings us back to, okay, so we are a change-making campus. We're looking at these UN Sustainable Development Goals, but what does that really mean? You know, these are big lofty things. They're sometimes they're abstract for people, um, but more importantly, what does that mean for Georgian? How does Georgian respond and what is Georgian doing around sort of these bigger, larger visions? Well, so this is what it means. First of all, it means that um, on this journey that we're going on today and on this journey as a changemaker uh, college is that it means about flourishing communities. It's this idea that we're striving to build an educational community that helps students build identities and capacities as collaborative agents for change and gives multiple opportunities to practice change making. So it's this idea that we're committing ourselves uh, to showing you the potential, the possibility that if you have a future that you want to see, you can create it by giving you the tools and resources to make that happen. And that's where Georgian's committed. And as you can see, uh, we do have some students here as well uh, who, uh, these are social service worker students. And in the past, Hello. they actually took a look at uh, food insecurity uh, a few years ago. And you know, it was wonderful to have these students. Um, they were my students and uh, just wonderful to watch them transform as we gave them the possibilities to flourish. It also means that um, <clears throat> the concept of flourishing people. So when we think about being a change maker college and we think about uh, creating the change we wanna see, it's also about things like what we're working on this week is supporting diverse change making journeys. And these journeys are not just about staff, students and faculty and partners, it's everybody. Everybody that George and touch uh, touches or connects with or works with, um, you know, basically from local to global, it's about, you know, collaborating together on new realities and collaborating with others to bring these flourishing realities uh, into the good for all. So not only building the environment to create flourishing communities, but also within ourselves internally. And when we ask, uh, I get asked a lot of times, well, what is change making and, and how do you do it and how do I start? And the best way that I can describe change making is it's a verb. Um, it's not a noun, it's not a destination, it's actually a journey. And this is sort of where we want to go today. This is what we want to talk to you about is sort of talk to you about that everybody has a very distinct journey about becoming a change maker. There's no one right way to do it. And here at Georgian, you can see here, we've got Drew, the former uh, president of GCSA Barry. Uh, one of the things that we start to ask people about before they sort of look at what does change making mean is more about how do you want to show up in the world? And how do you want to use your academic uh, studies to align yourself to impact? And so what we do is we ask individuals uh, to create, a, to select a unique journey moving forward. And as you can see here, Drew chose activists. Um, but in the past, we've seen a lot of students identify different pathways that you could go on. And in this case here, we have social service worker or actually child and youth care worker students here uh, tackling the goal, good health and well-being. And they're doing it by being an, by being empathizers and social entrepreneurs. This is actually a backpack for youth who might be homeless or surfing couches and so that they can attend school. So not only about health and well-being, but a little bit about quality education. This is a pathway that these students had chose to go on. Again, 
pathways again. We had other we had social service worker students look at zero hunger, uh, um, and they became champions. So they were working with um, women, single moms, and sort of looking at how they might reskill. But one of the problems and the barriers to reskilling was childcare. So they looked at how might we create a social enterprise that um, allowed them to reskill, but also had the ability of childcare associated with it. So championing this idea of of a certain group and creating an opportunity to build a social entrepreneurship venture out of it. This is actually a passive greenhouse. And this is what they were training um, uh, the individuals to look at was how to build these kits and how to build these greenhouses and learning carpentry skills. Passive greenhouses, for those of you who may or might know, have a very low carbon footprint um, and can be set up pretty easily in the community and sort of tackle food hunger, or sorry, food insecurity. So this idea of zero hunger. So by looking at several different issues, they collapsed them together and championed uh, this vision. Um, finally, most recently uh, in the summer, we had Nate, who is now our uh, GCSA president of health and well-being. He participated in something called Change the Now and looked at reduced inequalities. Uh, he's a computer programming student, and he uh, is was recently featured on our Georgian uh, website. So you can check this out here. And so here, another pathway. And, and his story talks about what he learned about becoming a change maker and the journey that he chose. And so he looked at it from a view of becoming an activist and a social innovator, and how might we reduce inequalities. So again, very diverse pathways. And here's some of the pathways that we consider for you to take a look at when you're looking at change making. And this is where you can get started. And I'm going to post in the chat in a bit. Uh, I'm going to post in the chat in a bit here. Um, uh, where you can actually take this quiz and figure out what pathway you are. But this is what it's about when we start when we talk about um, starting on your journey of change making and being a change making college. In order to see the change you want to see, we have to help you start to look at the skills and talents you already have, uh, not only academically, but personally. Um, what can you bring to the world? What are your gifts and how would you like to show them off or how would you like them to contribute? And that brings us to what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about this idea of a global change making journey. We're going to show to you um, a, a group of people, including myself, how trust, friendship, co-creation, shared visions, and a passion to transform the system of education has contributed to impact coming back to Georgian College. How this idea of a personal change making journey uh, is showing up and how it's contributing back and how using the skills and resources and the talents of our guests on the line today, how we've been able to sort of uh, work together to co-create and really uh, exemplify what a change making journey means from the positions that we sit in within the institution. And on that note, I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to hand it over to our illustrious guest today coming in. I'd like to introduce you to Young Sung Chen coming in from Dubai and Joanne Renault uh, coming in from Toronto, two amazing collaborators, two wonderful friends and colleagues. And we're going to talk to you a little bit today about what a change making journey looks like and how that's showing up now at Georgian College. Young Sung, Joanne, I'll leave it up to you now. Thanks, Nicole, for that lovely introduction and just uh, understanding more about Georgian's pathway down um, change making and social innovation uh, in Canada and then connecting to the world. Um, and uh, so my name is Joanne Reno. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Fireside Chat. Um, I'm an artist and an illustrator, an art educator, and uh, for the last five years, really kind of looking at what change making means on a community basis and I consider myself a community builder. Um, we're going to do short introductions right now, uh, but we're going to um, tell you more about our stories as we move through um, the, the course of today's uh, chat. So just to give you a little background, I'm um, of Indian heritage, but I was born and raised in Dubai and I've spent almost about um, most of my life there and very recently, just a year ago, moved to Toronto, Canada. So I will pass it on to Yunsen now. If Yunsen, you could please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, so happy to be here. I'm so thrilled to, to actually talk, talk to you guys about and learn from you guys. I am already, already by, you know, listening to Nico's introduction, I'm so excited, you know, like a, so much, you know, a wisdom and passion is embedded in all the program itself. So, so eager to learn. And I'm Yun Sun Chung, 
and I'm a Korean uh, living in Dubai. I'm a, I'm a mother, grandmother, and also design educator and community builder myself. And um, I've been teaching uh, design, graphic design, social innovation at Zion University for 15 years in Dubai. And uh, I would love to, it's, it's so excited to share our journey together. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna ask, um, oops, did I just go? There we go. If I could please ask Nicole to uh, do a land acknowledgement for Georgian and then Jensen and myself will do one for the lands we are on. Absolutely. And we wanted to start this fireside chat, our land acknowledgement a little later um, because there, there's a reason for this today. Um, the land acknowledgement, as we've learned um, from an indigenous land, is about our connectivity, uh, not only to the lands we're on, but also a meta conversation about how we're connected as a community. It's also about looking forward to our future, about dismantling uh, systems of oppression and racism. And this is what our conversation is today, is this next generation. So I'm going to start by giving a land acknowledgement where Georgian acknowledges uh, it, uh, it uh, sits on the lands um, of the Three Fires Confederacy. That is the Odawa, the Ojibwe, and the Potawatomi Nations, um, <clears throat> collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. One of the things that I've learned about the Georgian land acknowledgement, and as we have said it many, many times, um, my curiosity in what this actually means. One of the things that I've come to realize in the land acknowledgement that we do give at Georgian College is the recognition of how much democracy is built into the land that we stand on. That there is a recognition from uh, the Three Fires Confederacy that they work together in a clan based society. And they also recognize that if we aren't in balance with land, society and law, uh, then we are out of balance and that we are stewards here. Um, and so as I look at my own self moving forward, I look at my own history as being a settler and my own family's history of profiting from the lands and maybe sort of not realizing that I have been part of the problem. One of the things I have dedicated my life to now, um, and I've done this by coming to Georgian, is shifting my focus and my research on how we might build more collaborative systems that are related to the land. And this is a, a wonderful opportunity today because um, that same passion and dedication for that awareness um, has brought actually Joanne, Young Sun, and I together uh, to work together. So on that note, I'd like to honor uh, where we sit today at Georgian and the land that I sit on. Uh, but I'd also like to share then, uh, Young Sun, Joanne, uh, the benefits and the relationships that you currently have and the future looking forward from your perspective. Beautiful. So I also uh, sitting in the land of Dubai, in the UAE, and acknowledging the spirit of founding father, His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan in al Layan, and other Sikh leaders who contribute to the oneness of seven tribes, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Ajman, and Olmokwaim, and Rasahema, and Fujairah, for their deep leader, leadership, based in the religious faith and the vision for the people and determination and hard work to, be, to serve their own people and the creating the better world. And also acknowledge the land we all of us live and sit on the earth, which is connected to our topic today, right? Thank you, Yinsen and Nicole. And I'm currently sitting on the land of Toronto and connecting to it as an immigrant and still learning what the, the capacity of it means to me. Um, but with respect to its history, to the people and the culture here, the land has provided the opportunity for world cultures to live together and to serve on this land and very appreciative of that. So within this connection of land um, and the mushrooming um, of our, our work and our service, I'm just trying to get to the next slide. Oh, wow. <laughs> it happens. Uh, sorry about this. There is like a really sensitive, okay. Just giving you a, 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 a
you know. just like <laughs> zooming past. So, um, so, so connecting to the land and the mushrooming of our service, um, Nicole Jensen and me uh, want to relate a little bit about how we came together and how we connected uh, on our various paths. And um, as uh, as a storyteller, as a social entrepreneur, as a designer, as art educators, um, we met Nicole in. Oh, there we go again. We first met Nicole in 2018 at the Ashoka Exchange Conference in Boston. And um, we were just, Yunsen and me were doing a workshop on what you will now know as the me we pathway that we're gonna speak about a little later. But we did this fun activity and Nicole came up to us and uh, she really enjoyed being in this space. And I'm going to just throw it to you, Nicole, for a minute. Like, what was something that really interested you with what we had done that day? Yeah, so I think uh, it's great. These I, I didn't even realize you had these images. So actually, in the top right hand corner, we have our director, uh, Susie, who was there. That was me, um, actually, and uh, Stephen Dooley from Simon Fraser. Um, yeah, and so we were at this workshop and we hadn't had our designation very long as an Ashoka Changemaker campus. And one of the things that we were looking at, I was running a program up in Aurelia and we were looking at this concept of the incubation of the change maker. You know, and so, you know, change making was very new at Georgian and we were starting to sort of figure out um, how and why and what is this, what does that mean? Um, and how do we bring that across? And I came to your workshop and I was like, oh my gosh, these people have figured it out. We need to know more. And you got us to do this this crazy like Mobius strip. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Because that kind of started this journey. Like we did these crazy Mobius strips, right? Yeah, we're we're gonna talk a little bit bit about it a little later. And we've actually got a little gift for everyone, so that's coming up soon. <laughs> But yes, we, we did this activity and Nicole connected with us and uh, we kept in touch periodically uh, through email and there we go again. I think I have to check. But I wanted to, uh, may I jump in to the, yeah. uh, the, the first do. encounter is that, you know, um, maybe all of you guys have seen the uh, one three minute, three minute one TED talk about uh, how to create a movement, you know? So one guy in the in the park and start dancing. And it, just one dancing alone for a long time. And this one, another guy coming along and dance together. And all of a sudden, in like a few, few minutes in time, everyone joined the, the, the dancing. So the reason I'm saying this is that when Nicole came up to us after the workshop, wow, you guys, this is what's missing. And you know, this is what we can, you know, like a really make things work, you know, what with, in terms of her study and work and all that. And that moment, you know, like a goosebump moment for me to, and Joanne that, wow, someone else is recognizing it. Not just nodding ahead, but with the whole, like a, you know, heart to heart connected, you know, like energy that we felt that someone really sees it. Right, something maybe we, we, we couldn't even see at that time. So I just want to point it out. Yeah, yeah, and and that brought us again together without even knowing this. But in uh, yes. later that year, we met in Italy, Turin, for the RSD Seven conference, um, where uh, we presented some of our research that we were doing in light of. Uh, flourishing uh, business um, uh, models and uh, change maker pathways. And our models were also starting to synchronize <laughs> yeah. uh, in, 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 in a way. And uh, that just got us breaking bread together. And we just had this picture up of Nicole inviting us to, uh, to break bread. And I think the aspect of sharing food together is definitely an important connectivity <laughs> um, in, in building these partnerships and relationships. Um, and that kind of takes us to how- Well, I was gonna, we, just gonna jump in on this before, because I think there's something really important here that happened. Because I think at this point, we were both still trying to figure out what this change making journey stuff was, right? And I just yes. wanted to sort of say on the line here, <clears throat> you know, when we think about change making, and, you know, a lot of people think it's very abstract, 
And even though we're supposed to be these experts and know what it is, even we're figuring that out um, for ourselves. And what was really great about this, and, and the cool thing is, is we have Jen in the photo as well too, uh, Change the Now, which we were talking about. Change, you know, Jen's now working with us to sort of bring this vision. Um, and I think it's really important for the students on the line to see that, you know, we were just sort of fumbling through. We, we didn't have all the answers. We were just sort of meeting each other at different places around the world in this weird synchronicity. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. And, and so I think that's really important to talk about in the journey, right? It's, it was very fuzzy. We just knew that there was a lot that was going on here. So um, yeah, so I'll hand it over to you. And uh, the question that we wanna ask today and talk about as we've gone through this journey, being very fuzzy, how we found it, uh, we got to each other, what was the one thing we had in common? Right. And I think this is the I think this is the end. I think this was the question we were all asking. Right. And right. yeah. Yeah. So um, so based on uh, what Nicole said, a little bit about how Yunsen and me came together. And this was in 2014 was through a series of um, kind of separate events that happened within a community setting uh, uh, and at that time, Yunsen was working at Zeit University and I was working in an art studio. Um, and we just landed up being able to collaborate on a couple of projects. Um, and that brought me actually to work with Yunsen at Zeit University, an adjunct instructor later uh, that year. And Lo and behold, as we were working through our curriculum, uh, we started just conversing and figuring out what was something that, that we really appreciated within our work, but also within our community. And youth was always the central of that conversation. Um, and Yunsen, I'm just gonna invite you to, to kind of, uh, what, was, what was your take on, on, on those formative years of our relationship. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, this is like, a, uh, we actually um, connected in the uh, few community-based initiative already, even prior to the you know, education at Zion University, but we acknowledge, we share our vision as uh, educator while teaching the Emirati young ladies in Zion University, wanting to develop a creative, very creative learning environments because we are in the actually college of arts and creative enterprises right and we observe at the time together co co-sensing together that youth were not youth were not engaged they were struggle to connect themselves and to the community and the separateness is a, so obvious it's very evident under the influence of so many you know materialism just you know like a and consumerism on top of everything that, you know, they were not, they were struggling, you know, how, what does it mean to become a social, you know, like a create, I mean, not to mention creative, you know, professional and global citizen, right? So those things that we were able to like uh, click together to think about, then what do we need to do? We have to create another space, right? To better that situation. So that's how I remember. Yeah, and that kind of got us talking and thinking about uh, oneness. Uh, what does it mean? Um, how do we cultivate it in our space, uh, whether that be at home, uh, at work, in our field of education that we were uh, part of? So we're just going to invite you, um, before we carry on with our story, to write down into the chats what oneness might mean to you. So if you take a few minutes um, to just think about what does oneness mean to you? And uh, Nicole, if you can monitor that and uh, let us know what are some of the words that might be coming through, that would be great. So what does oneness mean to you? You've got this uh, beautiful illustration and photograph of a tree. And um, the photograph has been taken by Beth Moon. Um, in, and the tree is called a dragon's blood tree that is uh, off the coast of Yemen. Um, it is 
a tree that has existed for more than 5,000 years, as we know. Um, and it um, kind of represented for us um, almost like a upside down version um, of what a tree might look like uh, because of this, the branching system has a very obvious, almost symbolic root system happening uh, or visualized uh, in the top part of the tree. So when we were looking at oneness, we were trying to figure out um, what is seen and what is unseen, um, or what is visible and what is invisible um, in that sensibility. Um, what brings in the aspect of unity? Uh, what brings in the aspects of um, growth? Um, and uh, expansion. So, Jensen, I'm just going to ask you to uh, say a few words about that too. Absolutely. And um, within the you know connectedness, interconnectedness in this nature, you know, actually symbolize right. So we realize that vision of oneness is lie hidden in our fragmented you know education environment when actually it's obvious, who doesn't know a tree? Who doesn't know the tree has a root, right? Everyone knows it, but lie hidden, you know, constantly actually sending a signal that, you know, look guys, you know, this is, uh, you know, like a manifesting, you know, true beauty and the life giving, you know, force that we might be able to learn from to heal and to fix the fragmentation that we have and home and you know community and you know workforces in a bigger space that we are in in education right so we as an educator we observe that you know this um youth the disengagement of youth that we were just focusing on it has a maybe it's a there's a hope you know when we looking into the nature's wisdom yeah, and I think that's, um, as Nicole had mentioned earlier, the connection to our land um, um, in bringing about that oneness that within, um, in, in all of our diversity, that union is actually through oneness. Because if you look at the tree and its many parts, the roots, the trunk, the branches, the leaves, they all have to interconnect to function holistically. And then what is our relationship to that tree? Um, we breathe in air um, uh, that is provided uh, in terms of um, the tree's uh, function, um, and it allows us to develop this almost invisible relationship uh, with the tree. So in that sensibility of connectedness and interconnectedness is what we started to really use as a vision um, to now talk to now find a path very organically uh, to work with the youth in our community and uh, in our ecosystem of education. So, and this is, oops, sorry, we're going back and forth because my cursor just seems to want to do something yeah. else. I like the, uh, the, the everyone's contribution, like a whole circularity and the infinity and complete togetherness. Oneness is the connectedness of all life. Thank you so much, guys. Sorry, can I just, I'm gonna just um, stop sharing for a second. I'm sorry Should about I this. Try? Yeah, if you could, please. Do you want me to share? I can share. Okay, all right, that will be great. All right. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. This is what it's all about, right? It's the good energy, <laughs> the connectivity. <laughs> the connectivity to my laptop, my ancient laptop. It's <laughs> not there really go. functioning very well. That's all right. Everybody give uh, give Joanne a hand, everyone. Give her a thumbs up. <laughs> That's right. Okay, can everybody okay. see my screen? Yes, thank you. Can you see Inico? Yes. All right, so take Great. it away. <laughs> okay, yes. So. Um, uh, on that point of connectivity and interconnectedness, we wanted to use that as a sensibility of our vision uh, for how we might bring about um, avenues or growth for youth uh, in, in self-transformation through service. 
So, and as an educator of design and of art, we were trying to see how the experiential learning could really come in to foster uh, those elements. Um, so Nicole, if you can go to the next slide. We started, we started playing around uh, with um, something called the Mobius strip, which exists in physics, and it's connected to the Pinaki theory uh, in laws of nature, uh, where you have the sensibility of oneness, but with the connection of two sides of a plane. Um, so Yunsen, I'm just gonna ask you to come in and uh, explain a little more about that. Yeah. Um, I think we were really looking for some kind of visual that we can talk to our students, talk to my daughter, you know, like a, how we can explain, you know, you yourself, your journey to in, in the education system means something, right? But it's all abstract idea. And then when I was studying actually in a paper property in the workshop, we were playing with the paper and, you know, trying to make a... Um, beautiful movie strip right and it just it dawned on me that like, this is it we are totally separate from one another and myself you know my higher self and also the uh, the for nature the whole force of you know like a energy you know around us we are separated and that is the reality so we accept it that's the reality you know front is me back is we and we are completely one, yet we are not connected. So we start playing with the, um, this Mobius strip, you know, like in physics, they call it the magic strip because they constantly, constantly, you know, devise an infinite number of, you know, loops that they can create. It's actually fascinating. If you play, I highly recommend it. Joanne and I actually did it like a whole afternoon and we made a messy, you know, strip. And the way that we cannot even divide any longer. But what we just, you know, figured it out is, oh, it's a pathway. One is journey. You know, when you, when you make it, you have to flip and connect, right? Flip and connect. The flat paper has to be two, you know, 3D, you know, structure. Flip and connect the action, the commitment actually allow us to walk on the path of, you know, like a change making pathway. So we symbolize that cutting through the, uh, the, the midline creates expansion. So second you know, image, and if you, you know, cut it again, it creates another circle, just like a, you're giving birth, the new one. When you're working on the cause of the goodness in the society, not only you expand the, uh, the capacity of the collectiveness, but you yourself, your identity is getting stronger. So it was so much like a, um, joy to figure it out this you know the the wisdom that we were discovering within the physics and we just put in a link into the chat um so this is the little gift that you can go home uh, or if you're at home uh to actually do this after uh this session or later on this weekend uh to make your own mobius strip and we've had the joy of being able to do this with Georgian College in the last couple of months, actually, with the Change the Now program that we are affiliated with. Um, and these are some amazing uh, thoughts that came through from the students who were participating since September um, as part of the Change the Now program. And uh, some people thought it really inspired them to understand this concept of how the self and um, the other or society or anyone outside of the self starts connecting and understanding um, through a visual kind of activity, the sensibility of oneness of what is possible. Um, so uh, Nicole, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so that kind of led us to figure out or understand better, what is a change maker? Who is a change maker? Um, how does a change maker's pathway uh, move from the self to society and then back to the self in a continuous looping of action and reflection? And uh, we came up with um, this kind of diagram um, or illustration of four 
full phases or full stages within that journey. And we use the word journey because it really is a journey. Everyone's uh, pathway looks very different and how you get to where you get to is completely your, um, it's yours, it's, it's, um, it's, it's your uh, time and space to walk into. So one of the first stages was about our disconnection from each other. So uh, we start looking at where, where do we, where are we disconnected from? Who are we disconnected from? What are we disconnected from uh, within our environments or space? Um, so allowing for inquiry to come into the process um, and the element of discovery to come into the process. So asking questions, I think a change maker's journey is really about asking questions uh, within that sensibility of understanding. Um, and then that brings us by asking questions, you're now open to looking into, um, into other people and other situations happening around you and really listening in and communicating. So you're trying to find that relationship uh, between the self and other. Um, coming into then a sense of unity or a space of unity. Um, how do we collaborate? How do we partner up? How do we uh, really work towards um, um, the, the causes or the um, um, issues that are around us? Um, and how do we grow from that? And what kind of inner work do we need to do for ourselves through that process? Which then leads to this, this kind of probably revelation or the aha moment as we call it of just understanding where our spaces lie between the me and the we and and taking it to that level of uh, engagement and connecting so we're going to take you on a little journey of how we started moving through our very organic space without a big plan in mind, but only with a pure vision that we really wanted to understand oneness better and cultivate it through the education work that we were part of. So Yunsen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Nicole, can we go back to the previous slide, the illustration done by Joanne beautifully? So just one thing that I wanted to um, just share is that the content development of the whole um, the program, the, the, the program we designed was focusing on actual creativity, very much creativity, art integration and storytelling to invoke the inner creative confidence within everyone. There's another one that's, you know, right? We acknowledge, we trust, we empathize with the, you know, people, every single person, including my grandchild. <laughs> and the, uh, so through the uh, nature-based stories that, you know, we start with the story and the heart connecting activities, like uh, we have to really work with the people, you know, if you, are, you know, stick with your laptop and your desktop and your own space, you're not gonna really get through the program, right? And the actually reflective journaling, you know, I know it's old fashioned, but you know, when you, play when you sit with yourself with a pen and paper, you know, things changes, right? So we are trying to have participant experience the transformative journey through that. And then while like uh, discovering the, the, again, you know, connectedness with the nature and others and higher self. Yes. And then we can go to next slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually our journey was starting from home and neighbors and you know like anyone we can actually reach out to you know we were not shy we were not shy you know we were um actually you know like we are having a you know film screening with a you know community we asked you know other organizations to, oh let us let me let us use this space they come to the uh, the place and watch the you know home you know documentary together and discuss what's going on you know right now and in the world and you know it, it, all kinds of people came you know doctors and mothers and you know grandmothers you know, and you know even the you know youth space in the community space and uh, also even we were asking community how do you see Noko being you know you know existing in this in in the community. So we were actually thinking about the business, you know, business model canvas with them. 
So that was our, you know, like a first round work. And then we can and go I, next slide. And yeah. I just want to connect it back to, you know, uh, Nicole, sure. the opening uh, chat with Jennifer DeCoste with, um, I hope I get this right, uh, Life School Home or Life Home School. Up school, yeah. Yeah, um, that she created a similar space, and I think it begins with the community. It begins with uh, with that sensibility. Yeah, and it was very intuitive. You know, we didn't we didn't you know follow through any manual, right? There's no manual. You know, we have to create our own manual. Like we have to see for ourselves, right? Walk the talk. So that the. the the first part, actually what we have done many, many workshops, Joy and I, again, we're not shy. We went to community, we went to high school, we went to high school like conference and in the school, in our university and sitting down. And we also reach out to um, UA youth. We advertise, anyone can come, the youth, the professional, let's come and just see, you know, what we can do collectively, right? Understand that my relationship towards, you know, whole building the new society, right? It was a youth movement. So we did like a six months long, arduous, you know, like a six months while we are managing full-time job at university. And of course, wife and, you know, our work at, you know, home. Actually, Joanne and I, was so close. We almost like married to each other. We didn't see our husband on weekend because we had to do this work for six months, right? So without the weekend, we were working with the 35, some, you know, amazing youth. You know, a lot of people uh, join and, you know, actually express the gratitude and, you know, aha moment that they share an idea they want to move forward. And a whole like a food issue came out, you know, in the UAE. So focusing on like a, you know, most of the project focusing on, you know, food waste at the time. And maybe we can continue. And actually we propose, can you guys work with other people, like other country, other culture? What if we connect, you know, like at that time, we actually talk about, let's connect and collaborate and contribute, right? There were three, three, you know, you know, co, co, and then we try to actually bring about like a, the verb that, you know, Nicole mentioned, you know, the journey is like a change making is not a noun, right? It's a verb. So we are trying to activate in that way. So we create the, the crazy concept of let's create Nepal, UAE, Nepal Connect. So once maybe, you know, Nepal wants to create UAE, Korea Connect, you know, eventually you will create like a, uh, cluster of youth in the globe setting. That was our vision. So that we ran the uh, nine days at the boot camp and in the in Nepal, actually the three years, first year was 2006, were six days and prepare, you know, getting to know actually the people because it, we don't want to make mistake. You know, a lot of people go into the foreign land and do their job and come back out and the project doesn't sustain, right? So that was our, you know, really mindful of the, the fact that we really want to enable them to continue that, you know, whole, um, the youth movement. So we did first year and, you know, we were able to find uh, several, like, um, I don't know, handful of the, maybe 12 of youth that we, we can, we can actually create the, uh, the booth camp, you know, next year together. So it was co-created and the, um, Joanne, you want to carry forward with the more, you know, the... the yeah, the, just, the, I'll just jump in. Like, maybe people are wondering, why did we connect with Nepal? And um, so in 2015, while we were kind of working at a community level, and then like, uh, with, with a bigger kind of university level, and um, uh, we... We, we, we got to hear that Nepal, Kathmandu specifically, had um, a very devastating earthquake. And we were trying to figure out, we had friends in Nepal, and we were trying to figure out how could we help, uh, but not just monetarily or you know, through donations, but really create um, some kind of a small impact uh, in a meaningful way. And um, we connected with our friends in Nepal and we, just shared this idea with them, like, is this something that the youth would be useful for the youth uh, to, to help build 
up some of their homes and uh, spaces again, and to really bring about healing within their communities. And that's how UAE Nepal connect happened, <laughs> uh, just in terms of the context. So, um, so a lot of the, the work that was coming through was really keeping our ears, our hearts, our eyes, you know, like all of our senses as open as we could to enable that energy to come in to build, uh, to build these relationships and partnerships. I just wanted to add that in. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just one small thing before we go into Pavitra is that we didn't rely on our capacity at all. You know, we were very there to push this idea, relying on the people out there who can actually help us to actually, you know, deliver this nine day camp. You know, one of the participants asked us, come on, guys, you know, Joanne, Yunsan, you're not the, uh, the actually in you know, a business expert. How can you run the uh, <laughs> actual social innovation bootcamp for them to become social entrepreneur, right? And then we reach out to our you know network of friends and you know uh, friends and you know colleagues who brings their expertise. We brought like a business expert, architects, and you know all in uh, facilitator who can actually help us to deliver this cohesive you know project. And we reach also reach out to local you know, ecosystem of, you know, probably, you know, 13 NGO, INGO, like who can actually become a mentor for them to continue to grow. So there are a lot of elements that we rely on connection, you know, trusting the oneness, trusting that we actually can create, co-create, you know, like a support system for the youth. Yeah, so true. And um, we're just going to take you on this little journey of uh, Papitra Maji's Changemaker Pathway and how she came into our lives and vice versa. Um, and there is no coincidence in anything happening. <laughs> uh, it's all called for. So we were in Nepal and we had put out a call uh, through some of the uh, youth that we were working with. Uh, for any youth to come in, and this was all uh, free, uh, we we kind of built up our resources from the community itself in Dubai, and uh, uh, went to Nepal uh, to to kind of work on this program with the youth. And someone gave Pavitra a call who was already kind of part of the program and said, hey, do you want to just come and see what this is about? You might find it interesting. But she was like hesitant, but she's like, OK, I'll come and just see. And she came in and she knocked on. We were we were in this uh, beautiful space called Pasayad, uh, which is like a, a youth um, hostel kind of space um, and she knocked on and you know she's like uh, I heard you're doing this but my English is not very good and I know that you're doing this in English but uh, can I uh, can I try for it? So we said yes for sure come in and she started speaking to us and she had so much of passion and energy and she just wanted to be there. And it was a three day boot camp at that point. And uh, it was a residential boot camp. So that means we were asking participants to actually live within the space and you know, lodging and food were provided and uh, we were working, eating, sleeping uh, you know, under the same roof. And that in itself was creating those friendships and those connections. And she literally came in with just the clothes on her back and and she just called up her parents and said, hey, this program is going on. Can I please do it? It looks really interesting. And she stayed. <laughs> so uh, through some of her, uh, through this one friend that she was there and she made some others, they all pulled in and helped her out with like, you know, getting through the next three days, um, either by um, explaining something in Nepalese because, uh, you know, the English uh, translation was not um, uh, understanding or she was not able to understand through it. And um, and she just she just kind of blossomed. She just opened up. And at the end of those three days, uh, this was in 2016. She's like, I want to do something. She didn't know what it was going to be. She just said, I want to do something. And she stayed in touch with us. We left. But in 2017, we were asked to return by the youth that were part of this first year's program. And um, 
they were the ones that actually helped structure and put the program together. And the program was really uh, for how do you build up your capacities as a change maker and then find your purpose and connect it to hopefully what could become a social entrepreneurial opportunity for themselves and for their community. So she actually led us coming back together in 2017. Uh, she was so much, you could just see the confidence uh, coming through. And um, she, you know, she, she said this beautiful thing, like I grew up in a society where educating girls was not important. I am the first girl of my village to have a higher education. Um, this needs to change. And that's what she kind of blossomed out of in 2017. So Nicole, if you can go to the next slide. Um, and, um, and she really said that I'm committed to move forward uh, within that leverage. We can go th to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to show you the collage. And this is her from 2017 to 2018, where she actually kind of brought an education program to her village, uh, to the women in her village and began this literacy program um, so that they could actually kind of open bank accounts for themselves and uh, do um, handicrafts or uh, use their skills uh, to create products that could be bought or uh, sold in the market. Um, and if we can just move to the next slide. The project was called uh, Shah. I always get the word wrong, but uh, just pronounce Shahasi. it for me. Yeah, Shahasi. Shahasi, uh, which means the brave woman. Um, and here's her uh, kind of uh, story of like working with them, eating with them, teaching them. Um, and, and now she is also a mother. <laughs> so this is her next level of being a change maker within her family. And we just wanted to share with you her story since 2016 till now and the journey that it has taken um, in terms of her spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So and one more thing I just want to add to like a Pabitra, her tribe is untouchable class. So lowest class, right? And out of that, like I see her amazing, like a vulnerability and also like a conviction because she has amazing father because we were able to get to know each other as a friends and amazing father who is a social worker, you know, in the village. So, so she was able to connect right away. You know, if I do this, Oh my God, this will open up for my village, you know, people that she loves, adore, and then respect and change their lives. So it was amazing to see the transformation in herself and, the, and actually the community. And she also, also partnered with another girl and actually working in the global context of, you know, like having uh, the Nepal, you know, trip, you know, tourism in Nepal also and connecting also like homeless, I mean, I'm sorry, the homestay program as well. So there's a huge like a uh, ripple effect that she has brought to the uh, uh, Nepal uh, youth um, innovators group, right? Yeah. So many things to talk about. <laughs> now I, I would like to share another project because once it's done, we were looking for where, where would we pivot? You know, like we learned so much, right? We are like, a, again, thousands of miles away in Nepal. And, you know, we only can do so much within um, our connection. You know, we are constantly connecting with the Nepali youth at the time. But at the university, we have to actually think about the community, how immediate community can actually, you know, like a work together, create something transformative, transformation itself. So... Okay, guys, imagine like all better, right? Sand. And the people don't think that, you know, we will be able to create a food forest in Dubai at that time. So we start with the three, do you see this 2016? Three raised bed that you can see the like a brownish things. That's the that sand, okay? And it became a sanctuary within like a four year, three, we already started. We attracted all kinds of nature. English night jar, owl. Can you guys believe an owl came up one day? 
And you know, actually it was my salvation because I work inside all day long, you know, AC blast condition in Dubai. We don't have a window, I'm sorry. But it's very, because it's a very hot place, right? And then when you come out, you are frozen fish. And then I reached the point where as a, like wanting to become a change maker, I myself had to do something about this condition, right? Within the university. And can you go to the next slide? Amazingly, I was able to connect this beautiful young lady, Alman al -Basaki. She also had a, such a, like a difficult time being in the institution. She's, she's an amazing creative, you know, um, visual art student. And at the beginning, she said she, want, she wanted to actually quit her, um, the bachelor program because she didn't see the future at the time. And then I said, Almana, can we do this? Because she was in my graphic design one basic course as electives. And she, I noticed right away, she was helping everyone. So I called her out, you know, can you be a like, teaching assistant? She said, oh no, you know, I'm not a graphic design student. How can I be? It doesn't matter. You have already capacity, you know, to help other people out. That's what I need in the classroom, right? And then within three, four years, she became actually not only an uh, active student, and she became a facilitator of other courses that are happening. I'll show you next slide. She was actually you know, teaching my class to understand the nature aspects of you know, like, uh, designing the um, iGrowC campaign. So as you can see that we were able to work with so many people, radical co collaboration. You know, kids coming to the, um, in the university, we had the nursery, right? So little kids coming in and um, workers, the gardeners and, you know, uh, security guard, and we were all working together. And the, uh, and I will show you, if you go to the next slide, please. And also it brought the, uh, the 29 plus interdisciplinary courses working together. We don't talk. We don't even know what department belongs to where within the beautiful, you know, the campus. But because of this, they, they were meeting in the garden and they were producing their own project, but inspired by nature and in the commu in communication of creative ideas, right? Next slide. So you get, as you can see, interdesign, you know, and a visual business, uh, biology, you know, all the students working together, right? And Eventually, the Almana, you know, as she was so, uh, she's right there at the top right, you know, the, uh, the photo. And then even we were uh, doing the marshmallow challenge with the, with the gardeners. So we had um, 13 gardeners. And they actually don't speak English, right? They're, you know, like from Pakistan, Bangladesh, you know, in all other area. And, you know, they were actually, my student, they don't talk especially, you know, like, especially men is a very difficult, you know, like, a, you know, to interact, but they were able to actually play game together. So we found the language, how to communicate with the labor. And then we, we knew where they're from, you know, how, what, you know, family setting they have, what they treasure, you know, all this communication has happened. And then we were making compost together. And then there was all about inclusivity and the, like, a, we need to practice that your, your ways you know, lifestyle, you know, step by step, you know, we are not even close, but also, you know, like thinking of the well-being of the community. So actually you can see the Expo and, you know, Zion University and the Kluna, you know, logo together because it was, uh, again, we are trying to, you know, include everyone, you know, like a, to, to really better and building the system that the, we are student with the, with the, the, our garden, uh, manager Debbie working together. They're actually faculties and everyone there until like a 10 p.m. You know, like a, in the university, 5 p.m. students out. But that time, that day, I'm I'm still vividly remember trying to figure it out whole system. How can we things better? Next slide. And the um, what's next slide? Um, so Almana actually, you know, like a spearhead to creating iGrowC campaign. That was uh, like a highlight of change maker making pathway for her and myself 
and my students and the faculty and all of us because we were you know bring all the students project you know five different courses you know coming up with the ebook and uh, packaging solution to uh, how do you really improve like uh, our knowledge about the food situation and you know uh, action which is very simple I grow seed so we were doing, you know, the campaign is still going on. All of you guys can do it, actually, if you want. I grow see, hashtag, you know, and then it continues. So um, this is Almana in the middle down, you know, I grow see, she's actually putting, you know, you know, small plant on her head and, you know, holding the pan, panel. And the next slide. Okay, that's a good segue. Joy and carry away. I hope you guys are okay. Are you still there, you guys? <laughs> Not cold yes, sleep? sitting sitting in a chair sometimes for more than an yeah. hour can be stretch. difficult. So stretch. It's time to just like you know <laughs> feel the space around you. Do the little jig. Yes, um, stand up if you need to. Um, go get yourself a cup of tea if you need to. Um, yeah, but I think uh, Yunsen, uh, based on like this idea of like looking zooming in and zooming out into spaces right and uh uh catherine had written in the um chat about connecting silos um so the one way in which we can do that is to create small interventions in whatever space we are and it doesn't have to be something big or, or at a magnitude level um it can be something very small that just generates a sense of energy and spirit uh between people um and yeah and that's where i think we were looking also by 2020 we were also at a at a crossroads with Inoko and the change maker program and um, you know the work we were moving forward with uh, because both Yunsen and me uh, were I had left side university by this time uh, Yunsen was on her path um, of leaving too uh, because we kind of I, I was of course moving to Canada but uh, we were also trying to understand on a wider platform, how this is gonna work, how can we take it forward? Um, of course, the pandemic hit and that kind of put a full stop to a few things for a little while or a pause, I should say, for a little while to just recollect and reassess how we're moving forward. What does oneness mean um, in this digital kind of space? Also, how are we going to create the same sensibility of uh, practical learning or uh, engagement? Um, and these are big questions because we still wanted to create oneness. Oneness still needed to be <laughs> the center of it all. Um, so we started uh, connecting with family members. My uncle is there on the slide, the, the third one uh, <laughs> next to me. Um, you know, Yunsen connected with some old friends back from when she lived in the States. Uh, we connected with new people um, and youth in the community that we had met um, and also ex-students. And we just started having a conversation on what, how do we stay connected? How do we move um, our, our, our spaces and our environments so that uh, mm -hmm. we can continue this work? Um, and, and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just for a small point before next slide is that there was a commitment. We, Join and I had a really deep discussion that this is a moment if we want to pivot and find next phase, we need to let go of what we have done the methodology, the way that we deliver, the way that we structure. So we committed to just like uh, create another circle of, you know, people who can give us a new insight. That was a journey, you know, forward. I just want to point it out. 
Yeah, I think the letting go was really uh, crucial uh, for us to be able to now sense uh, what these next steps were. And Nicole was somewhere in the background. She was soon going to come into our, our, <laughs> our, our vision. Uh, um, and, and, you know, and this is why we're here today. But yeah, moving to the next slide. So we started discussing and looking at how do we want to bring about quality education? What does it mean uh, in terms of the spectrums that we live in? Um, and we started just playing around on a mural and uh, really having these conversations and even performing um, the little photos that you see in there are us actually embodying, embodying the stakeholders in an education system all the way from like being a student to an administrator to a teacher to uh, a, a funder to um, a principal so like all the different levels of stakeholders within the system we were literally actually even performing in front of our zoom screens to embody those characters and uh, what that might mean so in terms of how we moved forward is if we can go to the next slide is what does it mean now? <laughs> um, how do our very many parts come together uh, to collectively manifest uh, the sensibility? And one of the ways is that this was a little activity that we did to visualize our sense of oneness. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see all of our individual drawings. They were just we were asked to just draw shapes and lines and colors from, um, from an artwork that we were looking at, uh, but to kind of just make it our own. Um, and then we took those shapes and colors and uh, uh, lines and formed this collaborative, what we called our family portrait uh, with all the people that we've been working with in the last one year um, to kind of manifest the sensibility that we all come together um, uh, in, in many different ways and capacities. And yes, someone had written, uh, Catherine, it is a Kandinsky. Uh -huh. It was inspired from a Kandinsky. Those of you who may know uh, was an artist uh, back in the expression um, movement. And um, yeah, so this is our manifestation. Uh, so instead of a written manifestation or a written uh, module, we started to just use um, our creative sensibility to, to, to find new ways of expressing ourselves <laughs> and our oneness, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. We so enjoy so much, you know, why we are doing it. I'm just gonna say, I love Kandinsky. Just gonna say. Manifest <laughs> okay. postmodernists, you know, they were badass. They really were. So good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There's another Yeah, well, they they within them within their time frame were forward thinkers and foresight of yeah, culture yeah, yeah. and society. Um yeah. yeah. Providing a like a philosophy, actually, you know, building towards a Bauhaus movement. So it's absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. the and when they dropped the they dropped the gauntlet in the New York Times with their manifesto that basically they weren't painting, they're just basing what they wanted now. Anyways, super cool. So all the art historians on the line, you gotta check it out. So really great okay. album. Sorry, just absolutely. I think we need to wrap up, right? That's so. Uh, but yeah, but let's talk about uh, this is fantastic, and I think a lot of people are enjoying. It's such a interesting approach to change making right like it's creative it's flowing but this is the piece here that I think um you know you're saying like it's funny that you were talking about what do we do and then you know I'm floating around in the background and I give you a call one day because this is the piece uh this is the piece for me that had always been so pivotal uh in our conversations and this I always thought that this was the brilliance so I'm gonna let you talk about this because this is it this is kind of what you were doing but we needed, but we needed your um, a kind of vision too, with what you wanted to do with Change the Now too, to kind of come together and melt. Um, so I think it was both of our uh, aspirations coming together to make this work. Um, so Yunsen, I'm just going to let you go and just explain this a little bit before oh. we move. Actually, Joanne, you did the beautiful, you know, explanation very kindly, you know, with the previous, you know, the Mobius trip. 
Uh, but this is sort of uh, looking at the journey from changemaker perspective, right? So it's my journey. You know, I recognize, like uh, I witnessed all the shifts that happening in myself, actually, the disconnect that I have, I had, which I didn't know. You know, I thought that I was such a like cool teacher, but come on, I, I was not, I was not, you know, communicated with. I didn't understand. I didn't empathize with them. I was just very forceful, you know, like a hardcore teacher, like who never gets to really, you know, you know, you know, like really understand their reality, you know, so it's my, my daughters too. So like, a, that was the, like, actually my aha moment that I had to acknowledge that, you know, so otherwise there's no point. We have to go somewhere, you know, to acknowledge that, you know, like a shift first. And the, um, after that, like, a sh I re realized, you know, like uh, myself and students and people all walks of life who engage in the process, you know, like uh, with the brevity, you know, like, a, and wanting to transform, you know, themselves from, you know, very ego based, you know, we live in that society, selfie based, you know, selfie culture society, self, 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 I, my, me, myself, right? All about if you don't have your, you know, kind of, you know, like uh, not confident, you're a coward, or you don't know how to present yourself, you know, and that has to shift if you want to create a oneness, right? And then you really recognize, so yellow, me equals not we, to me, and we, so we just see each other face to face, you know, really sensing, you know, what's going on in our lives and the community and the society. And then at the bottom, you really like actually flip and then you almost your ego has to be like a die, you know, like, a, you know, all the amazing, you know, uh, philosophy and all the religious, you know, uh, teachers that teach, you know, actually help say to us, that you need to die to be born, right? So like that almost that concept of, you know, like a really to gain my identity, you really have to let go of my, your ego, my ego, and then be able to actually work together, you know, attracting like-minded people, just the way that somehow universe, you know, put together, you know, with Joy and myself, you know, we became, you know, lifetime friends. And the way that we bump into Nicole is not an accident. You know, we are attracted it. Now we are co-evolving, you know, moving towards like a, the last phase of, you know, like a constantly, you know, like a evolving, prototyping, you know, like a constantly, constant prototyping for us to just try this and try that. We never give up an iterative process of, you know, something, you know, like a big, which will like a uh, really guide us, you know, as a you know humanity looking for the light, right? The oneness has to happen in that regard, right? That's that's the whole slide about. Anything you want to add, Joanne? Uh, no, I think the the aspect of like our from an ego base to an eco base uh, is is something that we have to be very mindful of, but. Yeah, the inner work, um, I think through the process, uh, you know, of even knowing you for the last uh, six to eight years now, um, I, I know as a person I've evolved uh, and it's also filtering into conversations with like my husband and my family. And uh, it's just that sensibility that we can live, work and be um, um, in, in this space is really valuable and meaningful so yes. yeah so we'll 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 kind of leave it at that but I know um Nicole um were there any questions that we can maybe ask people to put into the chat box at this point if you have and Nicole if you have some questions <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think that's, uh, I think it's great. And I, I just want to leave this up on the screen for a bit, because I know we had a couple questions we talked about, but there's a couple things I just wanted to sort of go back and see. So <clears throat> first of all, the, the, the framework you have on here, I know that you've done some work on presencing and the theory you framework. Love for you to talk a little bit about the work that you did down there at MIT and the Presencing Institute, like how you brought that whole journey that you, you went on. So you started on that journey, you're right. 
Uh, you, you didn't know what you were doing. You were kind of fumbling through it all, but you were making connections. And then you sort of brought it all together in this diagram. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you did down there and how you were able to sort of bring that in? And then maybe we can talk a little bit about, um, yeah, like where you're going with it. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, actually, you know, it started from the uh, the change making, the Ashoka conference, and also school foundation. You know, like uh, the World Forum. Forum. Everyone was talking about you know theory of change. I, I'm sorry, theory of you, right? And head by the uh, Dr. Odo Sharma, senior uh, lecturer in MIT. So I read the book, you know, theory of you, and also leading from emerging future. The course is all about, you know, integration between science and social action and spirituality. I was, we were so looking forward, you know, like the, the, the language, the lexicon that, you know, Nico, we talked about, you know, like, a, so his approach has that. And actually the, the U shape came inspired by his work, you know, it's written uh, somewhere. Yeah. So like a, it, at the same time, it was a, like an opening, you know, eye opening the way that uh, feel like a, so aligned with the MIWI pathway where we were developing, right? We knew that MIWI pathway within one single cycle, this is not the full story, right? It continued to grow you know, to a different level. And maybe sometime, you know, you, you come back, connect, and then you go into your own silo again and stay there for a while. And this journey is like a so uh, diverse and, you know, like a different from one another, right? So the diagram shows that there's another, like a, the ups and down line going through that, you know, you, you will be able to within this entire, the humanity journey, right? If you, if you can, Think about it, and then then you're 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 going through this in so many different level. Like not myself, one, and my family. You know, my relationship with you know my family, another, and the community. And again, you know, very much big system level of you know we are all one. You know, on this together. So um, um, actually, you know, it was uh, heavily involved in action research, you know, to come up with, to learn about like a, how to really elaborate, elaborate, you know, the framework of MIWI itself, then, you know, how it integrates with the, you know, actually Panaki system to see the a little bigger picture of including the system level. And then going back again to this, like a U shape of um, visual that we can see our journey within. Does it help, Nicole? Yeah, and I think, you know, for any of our faculty on the line or anybody that's sort of interested in the theory, change making has many dimensions. And, you know, we talk about storytelling, uh, you know, is really important because, you know, when we show visuals like this, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about this, about how much change making is about uh, sort of pushing up against the status quo. It's about changing how we look at the world. It's about including diverse views. And how do they all fit together? Because, you know, once you know, you can't go back, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the toughest things I think about change making in this journey is we talk about it like, okay, so we're going to do some cool stuff. We're going to change, but it's actually more about transformation because as you do more work, you work with students, you work with these complex and, and complex issues. You're also recognizing you're working on your relationship to that and that's what the media we is and that's what i always found so fascinating was i think you were able to really sort of um nail that oneness or that invisible piece right and when we talk mm -hmm. about systems change you know really systems change is really the design of the invisible it's the mm -hmm. design of the space between point a and point b right and that's one of the things I really appreciated about your work was you got it. You were on your way to trying to articulate a true social innovation or a true change making framework. And the fact that you use the panarchy. So for those of you who aren't familiar with panarchy, panarchy actually comes from biology. Uh, it was actually uh, Holland's work uh, with this idea that, you know, you think about a forest, in order for a forest to flourish, it actually has to actually burn down, <laughs> right? So it can release the seeds and things. And, you know, that, that loop of that journey where the transformation, where you're constantly uh, looking at yourself as you find new information about how the world works, you're actually deconstructing uh, the world, you're deconstructing yourself, and you're trying to figure out now where you fit in that. 
And, you know, I really appreciated, Young Sun, you saying that for the faculty on the line about, you know, what you had to do as, as a faculty, like you had to transform your role and your identity of what that meant. So um, I don't know, Joanne, if you wanted to comment on, on some of that too, and sort of your journey too, uh, because I've seen it in the last three years that we've known each other too. I've even seen the needle move on both of you. Yeah, I think as, um, so like a lot of my work as an artist really um, kind of changed with that, uh, with, with learning about that and um, just understanding how our storytelling um, can, can be taken in different ways, right? Um, how do we communicate? I think the, the aspect on how to communicate all of this became a big question for me. Um, and within that learning, um, what does it mean? So I think just um, the transformation part of it of self to the transformation in society, um, it's very, it's a very, delicate, it's very thin, but it's very difficult to get through too. <laughs> uh, it's like a diaphragm, basically. It's strong, it holds things together, but just just passing through and understanding the nuances between uh, that, that, that transformation is, um, is, it definitely takes work. So it is not easy work for sure. And I think one of the things that came up for Yunsen and me also was how do we keep our health in check, both emotionally, mentally, and spiritually uh, while doing this? Because it does take a lot of your time. Um, and that's something that we're still working on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I was yeah. just going to comment on the mental health aspect of, of some of this work, right? Um, I think we forget that you know, when we're in institutions and we're in systems, you know, those who are sort of trailblazing and pushing against the system, right? Um, there is a there is a sense of mental health, and and when we're thinking about, you know, our students, right? Like you saw, we have so much opportunity to sort of en embed these these tools and mindsets in our students, but also for the next generation, recognizing that it's also about, you know, their health and wellness. And I, I think sometimes we forget right um to sort of include that in 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 our learning to pace yourself yeah very holistic way of you know looking at the big, big picture right yeah. for sustaining our effort but uh nicole i just wanted to um mention that i don't think we got it you know like we are very very lucky to to have you and you know georgian community and not only we invite uh, you guys invite us to actually co-evolve through this prototype, and this is so invaluable. You know, it's an amazing opportunity, and you know we acknowledge that. You know, this is just a uh, again, you know, beginning of the journey, right? Or oh, middle of the journey, <laughs> and I we are so willing to like a. Uh, um, constantly transform for us to be available. I mean, this program itself or this idea, or this concept, the way that we're talking about the language should be available for everyone, right? So when my grandchildren are, you know, growing and then I should be able to proudly, you know, confidently saying that you are part of this oneness. You, we, you, your purpose, you know, you, the way that you empathize and you, with the world and yourself, and also you trust other people nobility, the creative being that you always walk, you know, walk by every day, interact with every day. And then that whole thing is, you know, like a, um, building your confidence, right? Building your confidence and also the, uh, the, the fulfilling your purpose, who we, who we are as a human being. And this, you know, like a, not, to, not to mention, everyone knows that we are one, you know, we are one, you know, your race, human race, right? You're coming from, you know, one, one, one person to all the way to all of us, right? So somehow it's, you know, like a, that whole insight and attitude, I just want to mention that. Yeah, yeah. And, and just diving into that collective consciousness. Um, so, and yeah, and just I wanted to sort of, so we're alluding to Georgian now. So mm -hmm. what have we got you into? So we've got some new insights that are happening. You know, we've seen the story, we've seen the work you've done, your own journey. And so Georgian comes knocking at your door now. And we're this thing called Change the Now. 
So let, can we talk a little bit about sort of how what we're doing uh, with me to we and sort of looking at uh, this kind of concept of the incubation of the change maker and how that um, that iteration now of me to we, you know, you were talking about the digital space and, you know, what do we do next? And so I phone you up and I'm saying, hey, we have this crazy program we're doing. We would <laughs> really love a reflection framework in this, right? So we were working on a human centered design thinking framework realizing it's not gonna sort of move the needle in the same way. And so I call you up and you're like, oh my God, Nicole, are you crazy? You wanna like now translate this into the digital. Do you wanna talk a little about what you're doing with us and that experience? And and uh, so Change the Now is a program that we offer. Um, currently, uh, we've done it now since 2018. Uh, it's designed to look at the UN sustainability goals. We had 300 co-op students move through it in the summer to achieve their co-op credit. Uh, Joanne, you were an innovation expert in our community and, you know, Young Sun, we brought you in and talk a little bit now about how we're looking and what you're learning about weaving in this framework to a digital uh, learning space. Yeah, I think uh, with, with weaving it in and just having that call with you and we were like, wow, okay, uh, we you would like a reflection element to this program that is happening now online. And we were thinking, okay, it could just be a series of questions maybe, right? Uh, so how would we model that questions or those questions based on this MeWe framework? But then as we started brainstorming, it just felt like there needed to be more. Um, knowing that the technologies of like Mural and Zoom and, you know, how do we use all of those as our tools to initiate uh, more of a action reflection uh, element? So this is where like video came in, uh, an activity for each part of the design thinking process uh, came in, in terms of a reflection, in terms of a story, and in terms of a, a physical activity that you know participants could do. Um, and I think moving into this space has been a great learning curve, but also understanding how we engage. We're still trying to understand that better. How are we engaging with each other on this, uh, in this space, basically? Um, and Yinsen, I, uh, would you like to just add in to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was very timely. Mm -hmm. You know, it was absolutely, you know, uh, eye-opening opportunity because um, since Kobe hit, so many things has changed, right? So I was delivering three semester online. So honestly, you know, there's no other option than fully taking advantage of the, you know, online, right? We are very, you know, Joanne and I are very, and Nicole, you too, right? We are very people, 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 right? We wanted to see people, touch people, like, you know, you know, hug and cry and, you know, like that is all absolute need, right? However, this is a reality. And we, you know, as a change maker, we need to also adapt the situation. So right now with this invitation, you know, Nicole kindly opened up for us. We are so committed to fully take advantage of this digital space to reach out you know, the wider community, right? So Georgian community is like a, to help us to like a, learn how to this, you know, like a, um, uh, strengthen this whole program together because we are learning. We are learning how you guys respond to this, uh, you know, digital space of communicating, connecting hard, you know, being able to really, you know, let go of our ego and be able to co-create. How, you know, difficult is that, right? But I think with the you guys that respond and you know very sincere um, the participation. I think also Nico, you're right. We are very lucky to have a social worker, you know, badge coming in to to go through this whole process. So definitely, you know, I we see the wide open opportunity out there, you know, for us to continue this journey and integrating the digital and the physical space and continuously. Yeah. And I so think in a way it's it's even allowed us to, to connect 
further out into the community. So not just if we were still doing this in a physical realm, we'd be in a space working with a certain group of people, but having been on this platform, it's also allowing us to connect to, um, to people in other parts of the world uh, with even an intergenerational level uh, of participation, not just youth or young uh, professionals, but from, from the whole spectrum of, of generations. So I think the platform or the digital space has allowed us to rethink uh, how we connect. Yeah. And I think for us on the reciprocal side of it, when we're looking at, you're right, like, you know, this idea of presencing and oneness, um, you know, is so core to the change making uh, journey. Right, uh, you know, it starts very surface, like you said. You you want to you want to you want to bring change, but um, and where that I saw the framework and that ability to work together now was, you know, what? How do we create oneness online? How do we create that interconnectedness? If I can't be in front and I can't work, what are the tools, the resources? What is the flow? What is the reflection? What is that activity? And you know, the rigor that you had brought to the table, um, one of the great things is, so now we are talking about student change makers, now we're talking about that, that, that network, right? And that's where the Ashoka Campus Network comes in. That's where these collaborations where, you know, change makers around the world, that was what the vision of Ashoka was originally, was could we bring people from around the world who were working in pockets in these sort of diverse regions around the world to solve deep issues, could we bring them together? And so when we're talking about the work that we're doing sort of at the administrative level or the faculty level, and I know we have incredible uh, faculty uh, work with some of the stuff that coming out of our Center for Teaching and Learning, this is what we're working on, right? Is in order to sort of facilitate those flourishing students and communities, we ourselves have to be flourishing and we have to work together. We have to go across. So just like departments have to cross silo, institutions have to cross silo. We have to share knowledge. Um, in a lot of ways. And so I've really appreciated the opportunity to, to, to do that. And, and for where I sit, that network has been super important because it only makes what we deliver to our students and our own staff and our own community even better on, on both sides of the globe, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, that's, a, that's another, you know, um, quite exciting opportunity that we co-sense because uh, you mentioned presenting you know, a couple of times actual presenting institute like led by Dr. Oro Sharma, actually their forefront and they're trying to create that holding space online to be able to connect, you know, like a people to people and then join and show the, um, uh, the example of how our the new uh, Inuko team coming about going through that, you know, the uh, ULEX, you know, two, two, ULAB 2X program, which was like a connecting, not head of intelligence. It was a connecting heart and it takes time. So, so we learned a lot. We are still learning, you know, very, you know, visual, diligently, you know, visionally. And I really hope that we hope that, you know, like a Georgian, um, the community, you know, continue to invest, you know, in this, um, creating, co-creating space so that actually student and faculty can take time to connect. So it's not about like a, ticking the box of doing activity, but actually truly connect, you know, people to people that, you know, capacity of, you know, void of judgment, you know, void of uh, cynicism, void of, you know, like, a, um, what was the last one, Joanne? Like a cynicism and, and I, I cannot remember right now. I'm sorry. It's a, you're letting go of those, you know, like an open heart, you know, they're leading towards an open heart, open mind, open will. Like, a, yeah. So that, that is a press. I'm sorry. It was judgment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I said, okay. So that is, um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. So we're coming right. to the end of our, our chat. Yeah, so good night. <laughs> Yes. yes, I know. I was like, we need to get you to bed, young son. Uh, so, so anyways, I want to open it up. Um, so I, I, I just wanted to sort of live this. So I know we've had a great chat. We've talked about our journey together. We've talked about a change making journey. We've been all over the place and sort of hearing some of the work that you're doing, realizing that this work is hard, but it's worth it. Um, and that we need to do this together. Uh, this is work that we don't do alone. 
it's work we do in community. It's it's knowing how we show up. It's with empathy. Um, it's with curiosity. It's with that open heart and open mind, um, and recognizing that uh, if you know if we want to get to the top together, we have to. Uh, if we want to get to the top, we have to do it together or not at all. Um, and that's sort of a big philosophy um, around sort of the work that we do. And so on that note, I just want to uh, to leave us off. You, you created this really cool visual. Uh, you can see it on the screen here. And so just wanted to ask everybody on the screen if they wanted to pick an image uh, before we go um, on this about what they connected with today. So just thinking back to the conversation we had about nature, the beautiful tree in the beginning. What was the tree called again? It was called the dragons. A dragon blood tree. Dragon blood tree. And right? it's called the dragon blood because the sap that comes out of the trunk is a very amber color and it's actually frankincense. Oh. Yeah. Well, that is used for medical and uh yeah healing purposes <laughs> amazing so uh, yeah that was that was cool i'm gonna go check that out but if you can uh take a minute here and if you want to type in the chat uh pick an image uh what did you connect with what are you connecting with here so what image do you connect with uh use that as sort of a reflection point from our conversation today i gotta say i'm probably gonna go with f that lady looks pretty happy and it looks like um, there's going to be some good food in the near future. Uh, yeah, D. So uh, that's great. So on that note, I um, want to leave you with that parting. So uh, Joanne and Young Sung, anything parting wise that you would like to leave our community with from your community to ours, uh, anything you'd like to, to leave us with today? You go first, Joanne. <laughs> 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 well, um, I think in, in being in the space, um, I can only be appreciative of all the work that we do do. I think just taking time to, to be grateful for both the challenges and the good. Um, and I think that is something that I just want to leave you with that through this journey, we, you, we do face a lot of challenges, but we also um, have a lot of generative good coming out of it. And uh, you just have to be thankful for both. And I'm very thankful for both. Beautiful. Mm. Um, like change maker. Uh, I, I feel like you guys, all of you guys, uh, like, um, I see it. I want to see it like a warrior of light. So like, um, if I can believe, you know, we don't see it. Right. I want to like uh, punch my husband, you know, sometimes like, a, you know, may <laughs> in the occasion that we don't, I don't see the light coming out. I don't see the, uh, the, so we still had to continue to trust and give, opportunity as we need ourselves because uh, it's just such a humbling process because you know we we brought up within the uh, the competition you know culture right compete and succeed and you know like we need to promote ourselves to you know co collaboration you know culture so we are moving towards and you all of you guys are sitting here are the uh, the really a warrior to you know, like a spearheaded and teach us, you know, like the older generation to really learn and the coming generation to really, you know, like look up to. So um, we are all in this together and just big cheers for the warrior of lights to all of you. Well, that's a pretty powerful statement. So all of our warriors on the line, all of our Georgian students and our faculty and staff that are here today and partners. Um, so, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave everybody with that and huge gratitude, uh, young son, Joanne. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining just as colleagues and as dear friends, as we have gotten to know each other. And thank you as we continue to work together on bringing this deeper into Georgian. I think this is a great opportunity um, that I see moving forward and hopefully in the future, another fireside chat, you might be talking about Georgian students in the same way you're talking about your Nepal and, and your Dubai students. So really looking forward to that day um, when I can sort of be part of that conversation. But uh, 
yeah, on that note, um, please, everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us for Changemaker in Residency Week 4.0. Um, we will have some of the reach recordings ready next week once our team sort of sifts through all this. I believe this is our last event of the day. I believe there's maybe one more workshop, uh, but these are our closing ceremonies. I invite you to reflect on some of the things you learned uh, today, and I think you have to for your co-op recovery if you are a co-op recovery student. Uh, but thank you so much to Ashoka Canada, GCSA, uh, Georgian Co-op, Georgian International, the Indigenous Services, HBEC, and everyone else who has contributed to this amazing uh, week, and especially to Joanne and Young Sun for helping us to close off this uh, week. So on that note, God bless, uh, or to whatever uh, you subscribe in terms of your greeting, uh, to close off, um, please take care of yourselves, rest, and make sure you drink lots of water, uh, and have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to end this meeting now. Uh, Joanne and Young Sun, thank you again so much. And, <laughs> yeah, thank you and so much. we'll connect in a few days. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. You uh, go to bed, Young Sun. I'm gonna